Welcome to Cargo Film Presents. I'm Dan. And I'm Dave. On Cargo Film Presents, we review the latest documentaries. Today, we're going to be talking about WeWork, or the making and breaking of a $47 billion unicorn by Jed Rothstein. A friend of mine called me up and said, there's this new thing. I can't tell you anything about it right now. I promise you are going to want to be a part of it. The next revolution is the We Revolution. It's a... Uh, journalistic documentary and I guess the title pretty much sums it up as it dissects the rise and fall of the founder of New uh, WeWork, Adam Newman, and mm -hmm. the cautionary tale of his staggering hubris, the lavish excess and toxic leadership wrapped up in his startup um, that created a culture of communal workspaces for creatives aka renting office space. Some of you out there may have an office or may have uh, worked at WeWork at some point. Um, but WeWork also sought to change the facet, uh, every facet of the way people interact, also give orphan children a place to work in the WeWork family. It wasn't a real estate company. It wasn't a tech company. It was also going to elevate the world's consciousness. <laughs> And many other things, but but the most important question of this film is, in a fight, who wins, the smart guy or the crazy guy? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely one of the questions uh, that is raised here, um, and I think they answer that question, and and, and uh, it sounds like uh, they 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 answered it correctly, and they made out all right. I mean, you know, they there are so many different ways you can go uh, into this story, right? It uh, of course it reminds you, a recent film reminds you of is Alex Gibney's uh, The Inventor about Elizabeth Holmes, uh, which I enjoyed, uh, but but uh, you can explore you know this story in many different ways, and I was a little frustrated that the filmmakers didn't go deep enough into many a, a storyline here. So, um, you know, the other question, uh, you know, that is raised in, in this film is, is uh, something that uh, you and I uh, spoke about off, uh, off uh, camera here, is if Adam Newman is a, is a douche or not a douche. Um, that's what we're talking about, right, ultimately. Um, so, you know, and also I, I want to make a comment on this era of outlets kind of rushing to tell these, uh, be the first out with a documentary about, mm. uh, uh, you know, recent events, you know, just look at the, you know, four or five projects that are in production about the uh, GameStop uh, situation that just happened. Uh, you know, there's a lesson here, I think, for streamers and channels, uh, you know, that, that you, you rush too soon to, to tell a story and, uh, and, and, and you don't give that story a bit time to breathe and let the reporting be done uh, and get people comfortable with speaking and give them enough space from, from the actual events. Uh, so more of these stories kind of uh, percolate and come, come to the surface and you can you know, put a, a, a finer point on uh, things and, and you get more nuanced and, and richer stories. I think the, this film could have uh, benefited uh, from, from that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Um, the interesting irony of that is, <laughs> I was reading something by the filmmakers, and you know they thought that um, enough time had kind of passed, and in some ways we don't really investigate or dig deeper into um, some of these stories, which you know we find that the media kind of circles and loves to um, maybe cover in a kind of surface or tabloidy, mm -hmm. sensational way. I mean, this company that was you know the biggest unicorn in the tech world and you know was burning 100 million dollars a week and its founder was writing s1 statements proclaiming the energy of the we mm -hmm. <laughs> but at the same time I, I agree with you you know i was i was craving um a little deeper um dive into this and i think particularly around you know the areas of investing like i think it did a really good job mm -hmm. of bringing in some of the other uh you know some of the the workers they talked to adam's ex-assistant and some uh and, and a guy i think he was a filmmaker who was invited into the into the we family or we live whatever the the sort of compound was mm -hmm. um so you know and some of the lawyers so there was some interesting access but then i think yeah there was a, a, a gap really on the investment side which is interesting because usually you know you you look at a financial a documentary about it, uh, uh, you know, the financial world, and you're like, I don't really want to hear about the, <laughs> like the economics and all that business. Like, I just want the, you know, the juicy parts. The but juicy here, parts. Yeah, here there was a real opportunity because you know this question you're kept wondering throughout the film is like, why did why do these very smart investors 
keep giving this guy money when mm -hmm. it's very clear that what we have here, you know, is basically something that is going to crash into the mountain. And I just like, so either you think, well, these smart investors are really stupid, which, you know, is unlikely to be the case, it's right? Unlikely. Uh, absolutely. So what, you know, what's going on there? <laughs> what's going on there? Exactly. <laughs> absolutely. I agree. They could have, we could have definitely used, you know, some exploration of, of that topic because, you know, these, these many people aren't, aren't uh, dumb and, and often, um, you know, they, they are making a good bets, but not all those bets work out, but clearly here, you know, you would love to have had some additional background as to what what it was beyond this, uh, you know, this uh, charismatic uh, person uh, speaking in motivational, you know, jargon speak um, to see, you know, wh where they saw the potential. And, and I thought it could have also have, um, handled a little bit more analysis of, of showing the increasing valuations of, of the business and how it, it rose from hardly anything to $1 billion and $10 billion and 15 and 20 and so on. You know, what was happening in the business that, that was uh, exponentially increasing the, um, the value uh, of, of the business. So yes, I agree that that was a, a, an omission uh, in the story. Adam was getting interest from one of the richest people in Japan. He gave Adam Newman $4 billion and said, go crazy. Yeah, I mean, you know, because we have, we have certainly had our fill of stories about, you know, I mean, I don't know what, what your take on Adam was, but these kind of tales of American grifters, you know, like how much of this is a con, you know, that Adam is kind of aware of, but how much of it's just a, a massive haze of ego right. and delusion that just becomes a self-perpetuating cycle where yeah. you know, people keep giving you more money and you get more successful and you think, yeah, I'm like, I'm doing the right thing and I'm, <laughs> doing, right. I'm achieving things. And yet there's a giant, you know, amount yeah. of smoke and mirrors happening. Yeah. Well, no, I think that's what the one the area that I think they tried to answer the filmmakers did was, was, you know, aside from, uh, showing a lot of footage of, of Adam, Adam Noon trying to convince people that WeWork was a real estate, a tech company and not a real estate company, um, you know, and, and showing the highlights of the rise and fall. What they seem to focus on on this is this idea of how Newman and his wife, uh, Rebecca, you know, drank too much of kind of their, their Kool-Aid and, and lost control of, uh, of this company. And, um, you know, and, and even here, I feel like they, they, could have gone deeper, you know, what, what is it with certain types of people that get success that, and they literally think, you know, they're the, the second coming, uh, you know, that's rich material to explore uh, more in depth. And uh, then, you know, not to mention the uh, army of people, you know, portrayed here as mainly millennials that, that kind of follow the, uh, the Pied Piper and, and fuel those delusions uh, even, even further. I mean, these people, you know, they, they, the ones that work for at WeWork or were members, uh, exclusive members of, of the club, of the spaces, were convinced that, um, you know, WeWork was, uh, gave them some sort of higher purpose. So you have an office space partitioned up in small cubicles and the landlord throw, you know, throws great parties and that makes the world better. All right. You know, I mean, wh what's, what's that about? You know, I, I want to know more. You know, how are these people so easily duped and and there is a, a woman there that uh you know admits as much um that she really uh, bought into um uh, newman's vision and thought she was uh changing uh, the world so you know uh and and as you say then there's this the the investors who you know because of this guy's charisma and, and uh you know seem to just throw money at him and it's like wow you know what what are we doing wrong then what's going on uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm often suggesting that films should be shorter, uh, but this I feel could have been expanded into a, a, a three-parter because of all these different areas that you could have explored that, that you know, speak to uh, the kind of the, the times that, uh, that we live in. I agree, yeah, and you, you know, I, I think that, you know, the, the, the filmmaker Jed Rothstein did you know, there is an attempt there to do that. I mean, certainly we get a little bit of a sense of, you know, the financial collapse after 2008 and, you know, young people having, you know, a, t a totally just wrecked economy and, you know, struggling to find jobs, this sort of 
work situation has fractured to and changed. I mean, no longer are you staying with companies for 20 years. I mean, you're, right. you know, now everyone sort of was diving into entrepreneurship and there was a sense which in which tech would be, you know, the salvation of our, of our economy. And, you, you know, you get that story a little bit through Adam's, you know, ex-assistant who talks about coming to New York and seeking that sense of community. Um, you know, so it's sort of there, but yeah, you wanted, you wanted to get a, you know, a, 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 a greater sense of that, that would kind of explain maybe the, the scale of what we work and how it was able to use and, and exploit maybe that, um, that in both that insecurity and maybe that, um, you know, that utopian feeling that people did, you know, were really seeking community and, and were going out there to find like, my wife, you know, uh, she she had offices at WeWork uh, mm. on Grand Street and, and World Trade Center, and she really liked it, like the idea that there were other entrepreneurs and other creative people there, and that you know there was a sense in which you could share resources and, and things like that, and ask questions, and there mm -hmm. were other people, you know, on a similar journey as you, um, you know. So you know, the idea, like I think, as they point out in the um, film, is you know, it does, it is very compelling and strong, but then, <laughs> you know, as you said, it just, it, it doesn't maybe do as good of a job explaining to you how it goes off the rails so quickly and so badly, um, you know, as the valuations continue to, you know, continue yeah. to skyrocket. Uh, right. So. I mean, you know, they, they characterize uh, Newman's wife, Rebecca, as, as some sort of uh, villain in, in this story, right? Yeah. I, feel, I feel like that's somewhat uh, uh, unfair. I mean, she is, uh, portrayed as being one that is in, encouraging Newman and, 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 you know, he's already got the, the these delusional aspirations, um, you know, so I, I, I do feel uh, that was an unfair characterization, but I, you know, to speak to your point, I feel like the real villain here is uh, the head of the SoftBank, um, Mazasan, a oh. Japanese investor who uh, somehow decides to throw 20, was it $20 billion at, at uh, WeWork to expand in 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 ways that uh, you know he, he just didn't know how um, you know to, to to manage and and uh, and and do with that money i mean i think that that was i mean there there, there might have been um you know some some instability there prior to um that guy entering the picture but you know i, I feel like i, I you know if, if you had some sort of savvy business person uh, who could have made uh, Newman understand that he did have a, a viable uh, operation company here uh, in those early years and said, listen, you know, you, you got a good business, uh, go and stop with all this, elevate, you know, the world consciousness, BS, and, and, and let's expand in a smart kind of methodical way, and, and you'll be very happy, you know. Uh, and, and then the question remains whether a guy like Newman would, would have listened to anything like that, you know, and uh, the impression you get here is, is probably not, you know, he thought, after all, he thought he could be uh, the president of the world, which is a line from the film, right? We had tracking bracelets on. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. You would talk about being president of the world. You tell a 30 something male he's Jesus Christ, he's inclined to believe you. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that was a, a major turning point. It was the it was the major cash uh, infusion by SoftBank and and Masa Sun. And I, yeah, again, like I, I guess you just wanted more a deeper dive in, into that because you get the sense you know all these investors are looking for the next unicorn. They're looking for the next Fang stocks. They're looking for the next Google, Facebook, Apple, mm -hmm. etc. You know, and so as a startup you know, you were kind of being asked and forced, to, you know, in your pitch materials to essentially say that you can grow and scale and be one of the biggest companies in the world. You're going to change the world, you know, and do all these things. And it just creates this totally unsustainable situation where, you know, all these companies have to just build as much hype as possible, you mm -hmm. know, because they're not, you know, we're not talking about profitability or viability of these, these companies. We're, we're just talking about, can they grow and scale and become the next Facebook or Google? And so as a founder or something, you know, you, then you start to have to believe in that hype and create these narratives about yourself to get that kind of like $4 billion. Well, 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 does, does the, 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 was the hype, did the hype come after the uh, huge cash infusion or was the hype already there that it already exists? The hype was there, I think, but you know, right. it just goes into 
like a whole nother level. It goes into overdrive, yeah. no doubt. Like no Nick doubt. delusion after that. You're kind of like, well, all right, this guy, you know, he's, he's created a, you know, a pretty uh, smart idea and, you know, sure. And he's a great marketer. Great you know, he's marketer. got, he's got, it's a viable business. Absolutely. Yes. You know, uh, for a certain scale, but, but for some reason, um, you know, uh, some, some very smart financial people thought that, that it was, it was the next, uh, you know, Facebook yeah, and you don't I, like you don't also understand why this guy Masasan was, you know, giving him four billion or twenty billion, whatever it was, when you know his agenda was to you know to invest in artificial intelligence and machine learning mm-hmm. or whatever you know the, that ne- the next generation of tech, and then he's like, oh, I'm going to give you four billion for WeWork, and you're like, whoa, oh, right? Not even a tech company. like what? Right? I, I mean, that, 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 there's some, there's 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 a good forty minute you know, material, right, right, just, you know, talking about that, you know, and, and Mazasan and, and finding out what his deal is, um, you know, and, and people like that, that, you know, uh, have, have the, uh, the ability to throw that kind of money around, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and when it doesn't work, you know, this is, this is what happens. Um, you know, there's, there are some, um, there's, there's one striking line uh, you know, when, when uh, Newman decides to want to take WeWork uh, public and he has to create what's something called, a document called an S1, which is a document you have to prepare, uh, right, you know, right before you, you, you choose to go uh, public. It's a financial document that you submit to the regulators. Uh, and uh, as you said, he mentioned something about, you know, dedicating this to the energy of we. Um, you know, and people were, you know, really puzzled at that. But, you know, there was one description from, I think it was a Columbia uh, professor who, who read the S1 document and said it, it seemed like a novel from someone who was shrooming. <laughs> so that gives you a very good idea of, of where somebody like Newman was coming from, just so out of his depth in terms of how to be approaching uh, something as serious as a public offering to go into it uh, with that kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, rainbows and unicorn attitude of, of uh, thinking that, uh, that he was going to uh, indeed believe his hype that he, will, he was going to elevate the world's consciousness, consciousness through this operation. So yeah, at that point, you're probably losing confidence in a hurry if you're an investor. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I also liked, I have to say, I really did enjoy, you know, the collection of interviews that Jed Rothstein put together, the financial journalist. I thought, you know, they had really um, insightful and intelligent, you know, takes and descriptions, you know, very colorful that maybe you don't necessarily see in uh, documentaries usually about finance or, or economy. And and the one uh, ex-lawyer, Don Lewis, was kind of incredible. Yeah, too. Don Lewis was <laughs> best, the best of the, right. of the subjects, I agree. This kind of wry, you know, outsider lawyer who's looking on at all this madness going like, I mean, I, you know, I can't believe they're doing this, but like, right. hey, you know. <laughs> they must be paying him a good salary, <laughs> you know, and he was, he's probably old. Like he said, I think he was old, twice as old as anybody else around the, the premises there. But hey, you know. He has that great story about, uh, you know, uh, at one of their WeWork conferences or, you know, pitch in- internal company pitch sessions, you know, some uh, African-American usher tapped him on the right. shoulder and was asking him about, the, you know, what the hell was going on here. And, you know, at, at the end of the conversation, he turns and goes, so is this a cult? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, according to Adam Newman, I mean, he certainly seemed to be, uh, from the, some of the footage we saw, he certainly seemed to want to be conducting him, himself in, in, that, in that way. But, you know, I guess these days, if you're not an entrepreneur, especially a tech entrepreneur, they, the, the lines are pretty hazy as to uh, whether you're a business leader or a, uh, a cult leader, right? Um, you know, there's another... Um, uh, I also enjoyed the story of the, you know, the, the in-house barista and, and, and I think it was oh, a financial gosh. reporter who uh, was there grabbing a coffee with Mr. Newman and the barista, um, and, you know, didn't want to embarrass Newman who had confused the latte for a cappuccino. So he decided right there on the spot that at WeWork, we call a latte a cappuccino and a cappuccino a latte. <laughs> you know, I mean, there weren't so many of these super ridiculous stories you hear of, you know, um, 
of, of these messianic uh, kind of uh, business leaders and the crazy things they do. There, there are some. I don't think it's a kind of film where you get too many of those uh, uh, revelations, you know, but, um, but, the, but there are a few peppered throughout there. Future. It's about being part of something greater than yourself. I believed every word that came out of Adam's mouth. Adam told me I was going to be a millionaire. You know, these young people who really did believe in the mission and the purpose of WeWork and the experience of the culture that he was creating, that was around community and to kind of commodify that uh, to enrich yourself. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I mean, he walks away from this with $1.7 billion, I think, uh, yep. payout, as well as, you know, I think other uh, loan lo loans owned from SoftBank or whatever. I mean, so, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. to to tell people you're building this culture of we and, you know, they can all share in it and be a part of it. I mean, your whole mission statement is about, you know, this being a, a collective endeavor and we're all in this together. We're all creators. And then at the end of the day, it's all about me, Adam Newman, mm -hmm. you know. I Turn mean, that W upside down. Back upside down. <laughs> yeah. So, and also, you know, I, I noticed that you don't have a big picture of yourself surfing uh, you know, behind you in the office, mm. and you know that also suggested. Mm, no, mine, mine's much smaller. I, say, <laughs> I keep it. I keep it tucked away in my drawer here. So nobody sees it except for me when I open the drawer. So that's I how think, I like to roll. I think if you, you know, to get to that level, you know, there's a, yeah, a certain level of uh, yeah. just narcissism and <laughs> yeah, yeah, and indeed, and toxic indeed. things going on there. But indeed. I, you know, I just want to tell and, you. Know, yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, 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 I was just going to say to you that, you know, lucky for you, there's a lot more Adam Newman and we were coming out because I, I just looked quickly online and, you know, there's a, a limited series coming out with the guy from Succession. There's a book, two books. Uh, there's a TV series from Bloomhouse, an Apple Plus series starring Jared Leto and uh, Anne Hathaway as the Newmans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, get ready because... But those are all <laughs> fictionalized... Uh... Yeah, accounts. I think the books, the two the books, books are nonfiction. Yeah, yeah, correct. And then they're being adapted into. Yeah, uh, you know, they're, you know, that, and that's what I, uh, to, to, to go back to the top of, of this conversation. Yeah, I think that's where you're going to get some, some interesting, really interesting uh, layering of, of this story. You know, this is, I suppose, ultimately ends up being a, a good primer. Uh, and that's it. And I suppose if you're going to be the first one out there, yeah, you know, I guess you can get away with being a primer on, on the subject. Um, so, you know, I, I had read articles about this, but, you know, I would not seen a lot of footage of, of Adam. So I suppose, you know, in that respect, it was, it was, um, it was, it was a bit of a fun uh, ride, but uh, I'll, I'll close with uh, suggesting that every millennial should watch this film so that we, we, you know, they, they have, can have their, uh, their BS, uh, you know, messianic uh, tech leader uh, radar, up and running uh, for the foreseeable future. Indeed, to quote the great Flavor Flav, you know, if you're a millennial or young person going into the workforce, sometimes just don't believe the hype. Like, there you go. <laughs> don't believe the hype. <laughs>